Hi, welcome to Pole House Workshops video series. Over the last couple of weeks, I've gotten a couple emails and questions asking why I'm spending so much time on sharpening. Uh, I feel that sharpening is an incredibly important aspect to woodworking. Um, whether you're using power tools or hand tools, uh, a sharp blade requires less effort, it's safer to use, and in the end provides a better product. So whether you're using store-bought you know, drill, uh, drill bits, you know, saw blades, chisels or hand planes, uh, gouges, wood turning tools, no matter what it is, if it's sharp, you're going to end up with a better result and you're going to be able to control the tool better. Um, and especially for power tools, uh, you know, it's a lot, lot less wear and tear on the machine. But when you get to hand tools, it's a lot of less wear and tear on, on this machine, <laughs> on your body. You know, you uh, you don't want to be trying to cram cram a screwdriver through end grain. You know, you would never try to do this with a screwdriver. You know, it leaves a, a nasty gnarled edge. You get grain blowout on the end. I mean, it's just, it just leaves a terrible product. But with a nice honed sharp chisel, you know, I can pair this end grain all day long with no problem. And it leaves almost a burnished edge. I didn't have any blowout on the other side. Um, you know, it, it takes whisper fine shavings. And it was easy to control. So that's the reason for sharpening. <clears throat> this video I've chosen to dedicate to the next step from sharpening, which is honing. Um, a lot of woodworkers, in particular, <clears throat> tend to leave honing out of their uh, sharpening steps, which I feel is a big mistake. Um, for everybody from, from the, your basic cabinet maker to wood turners uh, to wood carvers, honing is an important step which provides you with a tool that is just that much more sharp and uh, with an edge that's just more durable um, and has a, an edge that lasts a little bit longer. You know, additional reasons for honing include uh, that refined edge that I talked about, which means the more you polish the surface on a chisel or a plain iron or whatever the tool happens to be, the more continuous that edge proves to be. Um, once you get a, a more continuous clean edge on a tool, uh, you're going to have a more durable edge on that tool. Uh, the finer scratch pattern will lead to uh, cleaner cuts, less blowout, and less overall effort. <clears throat> I've got an example to show what I'm talking about. Alright, now imagine this plate of sand is actually the bevel or the backside of a, of a metal tool. When it comes out of the uh, final annealing process, um, or is tempered the last time, it looks like craters on the moon. It's big uh, peaks and valleys, and uh, it's, it's mildly pitted under a microscope. Uh, to the naked eye, it might look nice and flat, but really it's not. So when the tool is processed by the manufacturer, it comes out of whatever sort of heat treatment, and then they take the equivalent of these big rocks uh, to machine the tool flat. So they would go over it with probably a rotary machine, you know, which would gouge and flatten some of those peaks and valleys. Right? So then you've got your swarf waste here that has come off. And you've uh, been left with a mildly flatter, um, cleaner looking surface. And it may be difficult to see on the camera, but this plane blade has got a lot of machine marks in it. Um, you know, where they went over it with probably a rotary milling machine, uh, which flattened it to a certain tolerance. But it left a lot of machine marks on here, which I can even feel with my finger just rubbing them over it. Um, so this is not uh, a surface that I'd want uh, for an edge. As you'd see, as you come up to the edge, there's all these peaks and valleys all the way along here. Um, this might show better. All these peaks and valleys on the edge, which uh, to the naked eye may appear sharp. However, when you go to push that blade across the grain of wood, it tends to want to shear along the peaks and valleys, which leaves you with a jagged cut um, and, and not something necessarily safe to use. So, 
you hone in your shop or you sharpen in your shop. The first process to sharpening would be a rough grit, a coarse grit. So probably some of these larger stones would be similar to uh, you know a coarse grit uh, wet stone or a coarse diamond stone or some of the coarser sandpapers. Um, you know, so those stones would come across and leave a slightly finer surface on your steel. You have your swarf and your waist and your filings come off. And as these come across, these slowly refine that edge just a little bit more. You know, so now here we are back on the edge and it's looking much better already, uh, even just in sand. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty decent uh, comparison. So this edge starts to wear a little more even all the way across. So then, you know, you move to, say, finer and finer stones, and finally, you get to a place where this would probably work wood okay. But just a little bit more effort, uh, you know, maybe another five minutes, and you could have this razor sharp. In comes honing. So honing would use a lot of very fine particles, you know, similar to the tips of the bristles of this brush, to then uh, polish this metal surface. So you'd go over it with this nice fine surface and it would leave you with a much keener constant edge all the way across. So that may have been a little overly elaborate but I wanted to illustrate the point um, which I feel that the sand does a pretty good job of. And now we cleaned up a little bit. <clears throat> there are a lot of methods, uh, just like sharpening, for honing. Um, there are probably too many to count out there. Uh, you know, every shop has got their preferred method. And uh, I just wanted to cover a few here, um, just to get you the basic idea of getting started honing. Um, <clears throat> I tried to keep the cost down on as many as these of these as I could, because I don't feel that you should have to spend a ton of money to get uh, a nice sharp edge on a tool. Um, you know, you can do it with just a couple of pennies, really, and some stuff you may already have laying around. <clears throat> we'll go through everything from uh, some of the sandpaper sharpening, a couple of uh, ceramic ideas. Um, I've got a powered method, uh, some regular stones, and even something as simple as printer paper. Okay, first the sandpaper. The sandpaper we covered in the previous video, sandpaper sharpening or scary sharpening, it's a three-part video set, so if you haven't watched it, I would recommend checking it out, and it'll uh, get you up to speed on how we got this set up uh, ready to go. Here I've got a 1,000 grit, a 1,500 grit, 2,500, and 3,000. Then I found, uh, just the other week, I was walking through Hobby Lobby, which is sort of like a Michaels or a Joanne Fabrics probably, uh, or basically a, just a hobby store. And I came across a package of sandpaper uh, made by Alpha Precision Abrasives Incorporated. I want to make sure I get that right. Um, the alphaabrasives.com. I'll post the link on my, uh, on my blog, so you should go check it out. Um, I'm not sponsored or anything, but I found this, this package in the hobby store. It has one sheet of each. Unfortunately, they don't have... Uh, packages of each grit, but it goes everything you'd need to sharpen blades is in this package. Um, minus the glass, of course, and some spray adhesive. But it goes from every grit, from 320, it goes 400, 600, 1,000, 2,000, 4,000, 6,000, and 12,000 grit sandpaper. I set this up on this piece of float glass, each one of these uh, in this, this other packet, and sharpened two blades and they came out razor sharp and it was uh, it held up well enough that I probably could have sharpened my whole set um, of regular bench uh, bench chisels so it, uh, it it works pretty well they are waterproof so if you choose to use water with them that works out all right the only problem I found like I said is that there's only one sheet of each in each package and they're nine bucks it's nine bucks for a package of these um, I went to Alpha Abrasive's website and I didn't see packages of just uh, you know eight sheets of like the 12,000 or 6,000 uh, which I was hoping to find but uh, if I come across it I'll post it on the blog and I'll let you know but these work really well and the 12,000 and 6,000 uh, in the, the 4,000 for that matter work excellent for honing if you're unable to get a hold of 
Pinnacle's honing films. These work excellent. Uh, whether you use them on the aluminum honing plate uh, that Pinnacle makes or just a piece of float glass, these work really well. Uh, and they're you know 5 micron, 15 micron, and 0.3 micron are what I have here. Little white ones, 0.3 micron. They have an adhesive back that peels off and they come out of this package. Um, they already have adhesive on them. You just peel this off like that. <clears throat> and then I've adhered one already to the, the float glass. I use a little bit of glass cleaner, spray down the float glass, uh, wipe it clean so that I make sure I don't have any particles of anything on the glass. Because as you get down to 0.3 microns, a little piece of sand or some grit from some other paper underneath of the film uh, will ruin your process. So you want to make sure it's nice and clean uh, and you've got it adhered down directly with no air bubbles or anything in it. The process of honing on these uh, films on the plate glass is exactly the same as the process we use for sharpening. So, um, you know, without the jig, it's just as easy to do freehand. This is the thousand grit. And with honing, uh, you know, you want to pay attention to the number of times you're drawing it over uh, the film or the honing medium, just in order to make sure that you're able to pull the uh, the burr off the back. As when you get to honing, there may be a point when you're honing when you may not be able to feel the burr. It's not quite as severe as it is when you're sharpening at a much rougher grit. So you pull up the 1500. I probably start pull chasing the burr. Work up 2,500. Chase the burr, and you can see this is already starting to polish that bevel and the back to a mirror shine. Uh, we're not even at 3,000, so we're at 3,000 grit. All right, and from there. We could take it to this 6,000 and 12,000 grit sandpaper, which I know work really well. Um, on the, once you're on the 6,000 grit, it's so fine, it doesn't sound like it's cutting at all. It's just like using uh, you know, an 8,000 and up water stone. It almost sounds like it's not cutting, but as long as you see metal filings or swarf in the water, you know it is. And this is polishing this surface up really well. I chase the burr off. Take it up to this 12,000 grit. Again, chase the burr. Yeah, and it's like I'm, I can see myself in there. Um, the pinnacle honing film works exactly the same way. Uh, they do require a little water though. So you put water on it, drag it across the surface just like you're sharpening. Um, and it, the, especially the 0.3 micron will definitely polish to a mirror surface. When honing, you'll notice that it polishes because you're tightening the scratch pattern on the steel. A polish does not necessarily indicate sharpness. Um, the polish, all that indicates is a tighter grain pattern in the steel, so a tighter scratch pattern. Um, you still want to be able to test this for sharp. So in order to test, you can shave a little hair off your arm, you can run a fingernail down the blade to feel for roughness. Whatever you choose to do, please do at your own caution. Uh, I warn you, please be safe, use common sense. An easy way to test something for sharp is to find end grain on a soft piece of scrap wood. Uh, this is just soft pine. <clears throat> and pair the end grain. So on this one, I'm using minimal effort. It's pairing real cleanly and it's leaving a nice burnished surface. Um, this blade I honed um, about 40 minutes ago so I know it's good and, and sharp. Um, but I can tell on the edge here that it's left a nice burnished surface. Another method for honing is to use a flat piece of hard wood. Uh, this is Brazilian cherry. I had it in a scrap bin. But you can use, you know, rock maple or uh, or cherry or just about anything that you know is is hard and durable, so that it won't dish very easily. Um, you'll want to flatten it. Uh, I flattened this one 
the same way we flattened uh, our whetstones in the two whetstone videos, the uh, water stone and oil stone videos. I just drew a grid pattern on here and flattened it on the surface of this plate glass. Um, the nice thing about some of the tropical woods, they tend to move a little less with, uh, with humidity, so I, I don't have to worry about it uh, changing shape on me. Um, you can also flatten it with a hand plane and some, in a you know, card scraper or something, but just make sure uh, that you test it for flat with a straight edge before you use it. So you, you'd have uh, a flat piece of wood, and you can use a lot of different things, diamond paste, honing compound, um, they actually make a special honing compound um, for wood like this, but these are just a uh, buffing compound that came in this box. You'd scrape it across the surface, leave a little compound on there. It doesn't take much, just enough to uh, fill the pores in the wood initially and then to have some on the surface. And then draw this right across the surface of this piece of wood. And I know it's cutting, I can watch it's, it's leaving behind some filings in the wood um, and it's polishing the surface. So it works really well. In addition to the, the buffing compound, what's extremely common is uh, a piece of wood with, uh, that's been flattened with leather glued to the top of it. Uh, and it's a, a tight grain leather is usually preferred. You can use diamond paste on that, you can use buffing compound. Um, you can even use it dry. Uh, I've got a strop in my bathroom that I hone my razor on to shave in the morning um, and it's basically the same principle but I don't use any compound on it and it leaves a sharp enough edge to shave my face. So uh, there, you really don't have to have something on the surface of the leather. Um, the leather grain itself should be enough to hone. Uh, but then you do it the same way. You know, you, you draw your blade across the surface of the leather just like you would on the surface of this wood. Same concept, there's no magic to it, it's just trying to hone and refine this edge uh, to get it as sharp as possible. Alright, as I promised, I've got a super cheap method um, that I actually really like, it works really well, um, and it costs about three cents, and you probably have enough of this laying around your house, uh, and if you have some buffing compound around the workshop, you're set to go. So I've got an old scrap cardboard box, some 3M Super 77 spray adhesive, and a piece of printer paper. Just no, nothing fancy, just regular printer paper. Drop it in there. Um, I would be careful about the weight of the paper. Um, anything over cardstock starts to get a little spongy, um, which might round over the edge rather than leave you a nice sharp edge. So actually, with the paper, probably the cheaper the better. Uh, Post-it notes will work. Um, just about anything with an adhesive back already. Post-it also makes like a long strip of adhesive backed paper, which works okay. This works just fine. Spray the back of the paper with a little adhesive. Now I've got sticky paper. There we go. <laughs> I went over this float glass before I glued that down with a window scraper and a little bit of Windex to make sure I've cleaned everything off of there. Um, just like your films and your sandpaper, a little bit of grit or something underneath that paper will, uh, will defeat the purpose of what you're trying to do. On this, you can use, just like all the other things, uh, diamond paste, honing compound. I'm going to use a little bit of buffing compound. I'm going to use white rouge just to prove that this works. Uh, in this set, white rouge is one of the higher polishing um, compounds. It's a little bit finer than than the red. <clears throat> All right, now on this, I'm just going to start drawing this plain bla blade, just like I would be sharpening. And you can see it's leaving metal filings behind on the paper. If I try to do this on the paper alone, it leaves the initial one, but doesn't leave me with any metal filings. So I know that the buffing compound is working on the paper. So I continue to work this edge, flip it over and chase my burr. There we 
There we go. And I've got an extremely polished surface on the bevel and on the back. Um, <clears throat> yeah, like I said, all this all told might have cost three cents. So it's super cheap and it's an easy way to hone. And if you have several different varieties of buffing compound, you could essentially go through what would be the equivalent of different grits in your honing process. Um, so that's a quick one. I've had a couple of questions additionally about sharpening and honing um, wood turning tools and uh, carving gouges. Uh, because they're such a weird shape, um, you know, it's difficult to sharpen and hone an edge on these. What I found works really well is uh, my work sharp, uh, which I'll get into in just a minute, for setting an edge. And then for honing and polishing, what works extremely well is uh, this is just a scrap piece of cord around. Uh, I will spray it with a 3M adhesive and then put different uh, grits of sandpaper on here. I found this one, which happens to match the profile of this turning gouge um, for flattening out the back. And you just take it and run it down the edge of the gouge. It works really well. Um, for honing, I will sometimes use the sandpaper method um, to hone these. Just find the edge and draw it back like this. Um, the work sharp works really well for this as well. I know a lot of people don't hone woodworking tools because they go through a lot of impact abuse at the lathe. Uh, I think that's a mistake. Uh, it is possible to get tools too sharp. Um, whether it's wood turning or regular woodworking tools, that is a potential possibility. When the tool is too sharp, it's very sharp uh, you know, to the touch, but when you go to use it, that edge rolls over real easy. Um, and especially in a lot of high impact tools, that's the case, which is why a lot of people choose not to hone. However, if you, nothing says you have to hone all the way through to you know, the 0.3 micron or your white buffing compound or whatever the finest grit of diamond paste is. Um, you know, a quick hone on you know, maybe the 4,000 or 6,000 grit sandpaper or a black translucent Arkansas, uh, or, a, or a surgical black Arkansas, or a, you know, a different uh, water stone. Maybe you've got a, a shaped in ceramic on glass. Uh, just a quick hone will provide a, a, a much more durable edge, uh, especially with turning tools, where I see a lot of people end up with uh, torn grain, uh, really not clean turnings. Uh, you know, a lot of the profiles aren't very clean. A lot of that has to do with how sharp your tools are. Um, so if, if, especially for turning tools, uh, people tend not to go all the way to sharpen them, um, which seems to me to be kind of a mistake. So I would, I would uh, find a method that works for you. Something else that works really well for sharpening odd-shaped tools, uh, in addition to just a piece of cord around with the right profile, is a dowel with sandpaper uh, wrapped around it. And you can do a lot with that for the inside of a lot of these gouges. Um, you can make a profile in your workshop on a piece of wood to do the same thing. I've also found uh, Spyderco makes ceramic slip stones, um, polishing stones. They've got quite a few different profiles. I go into detail about these on my blog. If you want to check out the post for those, um, these are the set of fine ceramic tools. Uh, they're, they're a fine grit ceramic. They wear extremely slow because they're so hard, um, but they put an, a beautiful edge on a lot of these carving tools. Um, and I've even used them on a couple of uh, the wood turning tools. Um, some of these I can set at the grinder and then come back with the, uh, the Spyderco files, or I will take two, which I'll show you now, <clears throat> or I'll take them to this WorkSharp. I was very skeptical about this at first. It will get its own video in detail with the, uh, the grinding wheel, but I wanted to show this quick for honing. There is uh, an added accessory to this that I don't own now, um, but these wheels come off. This one is a glass wheel. They've got one. They've got one with holes in it. Um, as it spins, you can see through the holes to the back side, so it goes abrasive side down. 
The screw goes on there. And when you flip it on, you can see underneath the wheel, or if you can see through there, you can see underneath of it because of the holes in the, in the uh, blade. It works really well for sharpening odd shaped tools like this gouge because I can come underneath and watch the blade as I'm sharpening it. So I can see this bevel underneath and I can see if it's hitting it odd or not. Um, and I can tell if it's hitting it all the way across. It works very, very well. Um, it's, I was very skeptical of this tool at first because it's a spinning blade. It's got, you know, the, the uh, wheel changes speed from inside to outside. It's air cooled, so it's a dry system. I'm especially skeptical of that. It turns out it works really well. Uh, everything except the air cooling uh, on this, this particular one I noticed that uh, I did need to quench the tools as I was flattening the tops, especially on the glass wheel. With this one, the slotted wheel wasn't so bad um, because it gets air down in between the slots actually, which helped cool. The glass wheel, the top surface when I was flattening the backs of some of these planes, uh, heated up so I had to make sure I quenched them so I didn't retemper the steel. The, uh, there's a great video online that I'll post a link to on my blog that goes over the honing, leather honing wheel for this. Um, it's basically just this wheel with a leather piece on top and you add a little buffing compound and it works great to, uh, to hone any sort of blade you've got. I haven't tried it so I can't speak to it personally but uh, in the video it looks like it works really well. As far as whetstones and honing goes, uh, there are a myriad of stones that you can use to begin and sometimes even finish the honing process. Here I've got a 4000 grit slip stone for sharpening odd shaped tools. You can see it's got a rounded profile. This also works good for this turning gouge, um, you know, because it's got that odd profile on it. It works well. You can draw the one end back across. And then the other side works really well to hone and sharpen this edge. Um, <clears throat> this leaves a, pr a pretty decent surface. It's by no means a final hone um, to which I usually use the sandpaper uh, on the dowel, which works really well. An 8,000 grit Japanese stone is probably the beginning of honing. Uh, for a lot of people. <clears throat> this will leave a very nice surface on a lot of tools, um, but I feel that uh, it's just the beginning of the honing process, really. Shapedon makes a ceramic on glass stone, which is extremely expensive, uh, but I've heard a lot of great things about it. I can't speak to it personally because I've, I've never tried it due to its cost, um, but if you got the money to sink into them, I've heard nothing but amazing things about them. Uh, you do have to buy the glass stone and a flattener for it because it will wear. Um, but they're up in like the 30,000 grit range, which is definitely honing and polishing. There are tons of methods out there for honing. Um, there's nothing wrong with the expensive ones, just as there's nothing wrong with the cheap ones. The goal is to put a nice polished finished edge on your tool before you get back to woodworking. A lot of times, if you have honed uh, past your sharpening stage, a little bit of honing is all you need to do in between working with that tool uh, to keep it in tip-top shape. There's no need to go back through every stage of sharpening if all you have to do is just a little bit of honing. You know, even a small glass plate with a piece of notebook paper is enough to maintain an edge, uh, a very good edge, on some tools. Um, <clears throat> I didn't want cost to be an issue, so I tried to, to show some of the cheaper methods. Uh, the notebook paper is extremely cheap. The sandpaper, uh, the pre-cut sandpaper is a little bit more expensive, but you can get some of those higher grit sandpapers online in bulk. If I uh, just look, uh, they're kind of all over the place. Um, the alpha abrasives that I found, um, these work really well. I was really pleased with these. Pinnacle honing films, these are $10 a pack for three of them. These are 14-inch uh, honing films. They've got the shorter 3 micron or 0.3 micron films. These come in a package of three. They work extremely well. 
Um, so a lot of the the uh, whetstones out there work really well. Um, although after, as I've said, after using a whetstone, I'd probably take it to another one of these methods. This one comes right out of your scrap bin, really easy to use. Um, another piece of leather you can find at a hobby store or just order one of the paddles. Uh, they make a pre-made paddle with, uh, with leather right on it. Those are just as easy to find. Uh, you know, there's diamond paste and buffing compounds. There's a million ways to do this, um, but give it a try. It'll take you five minutes, uh, and I'm, I'm sure that you'll find that it's a, uh, a worthwhile investment in your time. If you'd like to see any of these methods performed in more detail, just shoot me an email or leave a comment either on the blog or at uh, my YouTube page, and I'll see what I can do about shooting a short video or leaving a detailed blog post with some photographs um, as instruction. Feel free to check out my blog at polthouse.com, that's P-O-L-T-H-A-U-S.com. Um, leave comments at the YouTube page or on the blog about anything you'd see or something you'd like to see more of, uh, or shoot me an email at polthouseworkshop at gmail.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time in the Polthouse Workshop video series.